First thing we need to do uh, when we're considering a centripetal force is take a look at Newton's first law, law of inertia. Simply put, an object at rest remains at rest, and an object in motion remains in motion at constant speed and in a straight line unless acted on by an unbalanced force. This is a little further description of it. This is taken from uh, NASA's Gwynn Research Center. This is the uh, website link. I'll put that actual link in the description of this video. Okay, we're going to uh, take a look at a situation where we have a ball connected to and rotating around a central axis. So this right here is a central axis. This little blue ball is rotating in this circular path and it's connected with this uh, cord here, this blue line. Now, centripetal force is applied via the cord connecting the outer blue ball to the central axis. So it's right here. This cord continuously pulls inward on the blue ball, causing it to deviate in a continuous curved circular path around the central axis. It keeps it going around like this. Otherwise, it go in a straight line, like Newton's first law. Without the cord, the blue ball will continue in a straight line tangent to the circular path. And that's what would happen if it was released here. It would just go off on a tangent. The inertia of the blue ball wanting to continue in a straight line causes an apparent centrifugal force trying to pull the blue ball out away from the central axis. So it's right here. A blue ball will not follow this path if the blue tether cord is released. Okay, we're going to demonstrate this now in the real world with a shepherd's sling and a tennis ball. This is an ordinary tennis ball. This is a kind of a crude shepherd's sling I made. I'm no expert on shepherd's slings, but I had a scrap piece of leather. I punched a hole in each of the four corners, put some loops of paracord in there, and tied a uh, piece of paracord one of those loops, or using a bowline knot actually, with some knots here to get a grip on. And then the other one has got a loop that I can put on my finger so I can hold it. And the idea is that I'll hold it like this, put the tennis ball in here, if I can get that to work right, so I can sling it around and show the difference between centripetal and centrifugal force. So let's give it a try, see what it looks like. If you remember from Newton's first law and law of inertia, if I throw this ball, okay, the force is acting on is primarily gravity, making it go down, a little bit of wind blowing on it. But if it wasn't for those forces, it would just go in a straight line. Like if you're way out in space, away from all the planets and everything, it would just keep going in a straight line due to its own inertia. So. If you've got a force that's pushing on one side and it tends to push it around the central axis, that becomes a centripetal force. And we can demonstrate that with this shepherd's sling. Okay, this ball wants to go in a straight line when I throw it in a certain direction, whether I'm using a shepherd's sling or by hand. Now I can keep it from doing that with this paracord, which, like this, but keeps it in is there's a centripetal force applied by the paracord that keeps it from just flying off. Okay, the apparent centrifugal force is what's wanting to hold it out. I and mean, gravity is working on it here. Let's just let go of the uh, paracord and, and see what happens. Okay, what I'm gonna do is twirl this tennis ball with this paracord and this uh, shepherd's sling and uh, we'll take a look at that and then see what happens when I release it. You can see the centripetal force applied by the paracord is keeping it going in a straight line, makes it go in a circular path. Now, when I release it, which is gonna be in this area right here, if it's strictly an outward centrifugal force, you would expect it to come down this way, which it doesn't do. It, when it's released, it goes tangent to the path around the circle, which is more or less up, up in that direction when I release it. So if you watch that here, you can see that. There we go. You can see the ball went this way, not that way. Okay, I'm twirling the uh, ball with the shepherd's sling and a, 
in a different angle, kind of looking down on it, so we can get a little different perspective here. Um, if you'll watch, when I release it, um, if it was strictly an outward force, like what most of us think of centrifugal, it would go this way, but it doesn't do that. It will go this way, follow that path there, because you're going to release it roughly in this area here. And uh, so let's watch that and uh, see what that looks like. Okay, I'm about to release it. There we go. See? Didn't go this way, it went that way, tangent to the circular path. I hope you liked this. I hope it gave you a better understanding of the difference between centripetal and centrifugal. And uh, if you did, please like the video and subscribe and check out our other links. We'd really appreciate it. Thank you very much.